Um, I don't know what just happened, but I just had the hardest time uh, trying to get trying to get in here. Um, but I'm glad I'm glad that I'm here. I'm glad that you are here. I'm glad that we are here together. Uh, welcome to uh, Real Talk, uh, Real Talk Tuesday. Um, man, it has been it has been a wild, a wild, a wild, a wild and crazy week. Um, uh, I don't know if you're watching. Talk to me. Tell me um, how is your week going? If it's going anything like mine, um, it has been it has been nuts. All right. So tell me where are you watching from. How's your week going so far? I know it's only Tuesday, but man, it feels like it feels like almost like a Friday. Man, it's just it's just been it's just been a wild, wild, wild week thus far. Uh, hit me up. Talk to me. Tell me where you, uh, who are you? Where are you watching from? Uh, whether it be in the chat. I think I know who that is. It says, um, it, it, I don't see any names, but I, I think I know who is who. Um, but but anyway, talk, talk to me. Say hello. Say what's up. I, I am excited about uh, uh, tonight and for the next couple of weeks because we are talking about uh, toxic patterns, toxic patterns and thinking, stinking thinking, and especially as it relates to relationships, toxic patterns in our relationships, toxic patterns in, in how we, how we relate and how we love and how we, how we care for, for each other and the people around us. Um, and, um, it's important because, um, sometimes we don't realize uh, the way that we're harming ourselves and harming others around us. And so it's important for us to to identify, how shall we say, to to identify the stuff that's in us that is um, uh, uh, problematic. Let's just put it like that. So it's important for us to 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 examine ourselves. The Bible says, examine yourself to see if you are of the faith. And so it's important to examine ourselves and to and to recognize where and when we are uh, engaged in behavior that is that is destructive or 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 that is I hate to use a, a ten dollar word but deleterious to our to our relationships and our our personal lives. So. Um, I, I, I have an interesting plan for how we're going to get through this the next few weeks, but um, I'm wondering. I don't know. Our conversation tonight is about uh, is about Jacob, right? Um, who later became Israel, and the question is, um, are we going to be able to get through all of this, right? Because it's, I mean, when you're looking at his story, it's such a it's such a um, it's such a complex and complicated story, and really, what we probably what we we maybe what we should do is is just spend the next few weeks talking about Jacob. You guys tell me what you think. If we should do, tell me if you because I have a few places where I think we should go in order to expl explain this and explore this. But if you think we should just do a deep dive in in one family, just put that put that put that in the, put that in the chat. Talk talk to me. Should it be a deep dive or should we explore different places? Because there are some places that we can explore different characters and different stories that teach us about um, that teach us about uh, uh, toxic patterns. And and we talk about we talk about like generational curses, right? So you guys got to give me some feedback. What do you think? Do you think we should? do a deep dive you think we should do a deep dive in one particular family and look at this family's history or should we should we explore the different different story i see tanya i see you tanya tanya says we should do a deep dive i don't know there, there's a lot here there's a lot here and you'll get to see tonight because where we're going to start the starting point will give us will give us a lot of stuff right but but without any further ado let's pray let's pray and then we'll we'll dive in god Thank you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity we have to uh, to look into your word. We pray that you would, number one, that you'd be with us, but that you would guide us, give us insight, give us understanding. Um, God, I don't know why people don't look to you and to, to, to learn from you, to trust you, but God, I wish they would. And 
God, I wish you would now give us insight and wisdom and grace that we might grow and that we might know you better and we might be better. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So let's go. Uh, well, for, first of all, I when when we're talking about um, when we're talking about <laughs> uh, uh, toxic patterns and about about stinking thinking and toxic patterns and brokenness, I, I I think about I think about this this story and um, and and it, and it's one that you know if you if, if you have children you're definitely familiar with with the movie uh, Finding Nemo, but but uh, Dory in particular is is an interesting character because. Um, Obviously, if you've seen a movie, you know that Dory has uh, what she calls in, in, in Finding Nemo, she has short-term memory loss, right? And she has short-term memory loss, apparently, she says, because it runs in her family. This is the scene where she meets uh, Nemo's dad. I, I don't even remember what his name is, but she meets Nemo's dad and and he says, she tells him, uh, she, she's chasing him around. He's chasing her around because she's forgotten why he's following her. She's supposed to be leading him to the boat and where, where that took Nemo apparently. And she forgets. And so he ends up chasing her. And, he, and she finally explains that, oh, you know what? That's my, that's my condition kicking in. And, 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 you know, he's, he's chasing her back. He's like, whoa, 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 what in the world? And, and that's when she explains, my, my condition's kicking in. I got short-term memory loss. She says, it runs in my family. She said, that's, that's how she got it. it. Runs in her family. But, but she says, but we learn, we later find out because there's a sequel in, in Finding Dory that um, it's not just that it runs in her family family. It's not that actually it runs in her family, but it's tied to a traumatic event in her past. And so, um, you know, when, when we think about, when we think about um, a lot of the brokenness in our lives, it's often tied to um, not only a, a, a traumatic event in our past, but it's also tied to, tied to what what many of us call generational curses, what, what many of us have called or uh, what has been known as generational curses, but also um, traumatic events, right? Um, that there are things that happen to us that that leave an indelible impression on us, and if we are not careful, we could be we could be we could become stuck in a pattern of a pattern of brokenness, right? And so what do we do to to break out of these break out of these patterns? Um, but but I want us to explore a little bit um, how we how we develop these patterns, how how these patterns kind of happen to us and, and for us because everybody's heard of generational curses, but um, but 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 there are other there are other pieces as well right so I want us to look at that and um let's look at Genesis chapter Genesis chapter 19 um or no Genesis chapter 25 and we're going to start reading with verse 19 so if you with me say I'm with you just text just put that in the chat put that in a um in the chat area if you if you with me say I am I am with you put that in the comments put that in the chat if you if it's making sense it, I want you and ask me questions if you got questions um, um, ask me ask me questions all right so let's go to Genesis chapter twenty five and starting with verse verse nineteen it says this is the account of the family line of Abraham's son Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel the Aramean from Paddan Aram, and sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on, his, on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife Isaac, and his, his wife Isaac, his wife Rebekah became pregnant. 
the babies jostled each other within her and she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord and the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The, the first to come out was red and his whole body was like a hairy garment. And so they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. And so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebecca gave birth to them. And this part is the first kind of indicator of what, uh, of, of how we become, how we become who, who we are and, and how we develop uh, these patterns, right? And one of the things that is, is very significant, scholars often point to this, uh, this first kind of element is right here in the text where it says that, uh, you know, his brother Esau was born first, he's the older brother. And after this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. And so he was named Jacob. So he got the name Jacob, Jacob, because he was, was grabbing his brother's foot as, 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 as he came, as he was born. The word Jacob literally means supplanter. It, it means trickster. Uh, supplanter, uh, uh, trickster. Um, he is the, the schemer, if you will, right? So um, we could argue, you could argue, or it has been argued that, that one of the ways that we, that we develop these patterns is by nature, right? That, that you, you could argue, or it has been argued, that, that Jacob was born with this innate propensity towards uh, a tomfoolery, if you will, scheming, conniving, right? And we will see a little bit further on how, or kind of like where he got it from, right? Um, The word means, the name means supplanter, schemer, conniver, um, trickster. And it was manifest in that he pulled, tried to pull his brother back uh, when he was born, when they were born so that he could, so that he could be first, right? That's, that's, the, that's the intimation that he was, he was trying to gain a leg up over his brother. So he, he didn't wanna be second so he grabbed his brother's leg to pull his brother back so he could be born first. Now, obviously, scripture is clear that Esau was actually born first, but, but this kind of inclination as a newborn is why they gave him the name. Now, some would argue, you know, uh, there's been the, the, you know, is it that he was believed to be a schemer? Uh, was this a you know th this is one of the this is one of the earliest uh, um, what do you call it involuntary actions of a baby a baby you know if you touch the side of their face with anything they think it's time to eat right you touch the side of their face with anything they think you know it's time to eat um, and the other involuntary action of a child is to grab what's in their hand. So you could argue that they made too much out of the moment that that Jacob was just being a baby and babies grab things. But the fact is, um, um, he was he was grabbing his brother's foot as he's as he's coming out, and so 
but nevertheless, um, it is believed, we believe that, that Jacob is, is, is the schemer and was the schemer from birth. Now there is, so we talk about nature, right? Now there is more here that gives us some clarity about how he became a schemer. Let's, let's look back at the text and you'll see something here that's significant. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Now, I have a little theory, right? I believe that one of the reasons why, um, well, well, let me just read, let me just read a little bit further. It says, Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebecca loved Jacob. Now, now let me say a little bit about uh, Isaac and his relationship with Esau. So it's clear that Isaac and both Isaac and Rebecca kind of played favorites, right? That Isaac's favorite uh, son out of the two was, was Esau and Rebecca's favorite out of the two was Jacob, right? But it gives us reasons. It says that Jacob was content to stay at home amongst the tents. So, so he, was, he was more of a homebody. He was more, a, a more inclined to... Um, more inclined to, you know, engage with um, home things, right? And 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 his brother Esau is 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 an outdoorsman. He's a he's a man of the world, <laughs> right? So he he's he's the one that's more outdoorsy. He's he's more manly. He's the hunter. He's the you know throw the wild game on his back and trudge it home with the with the bow and the arrow, the shotgun and all this. Um, and so because of that, uh, Rebecca is more, is, 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 is closer to, to, to Jacob. You could also argue that um, Jacob is, um, well, let me just, let me just say that Esau, Isaac is, I think this is my personal opinion. Isaac is more inclined to be connected and closer to to Esau, I believe, because he reminds him of his father Abraham. So Abraham, Abraham is was more of the man of the world. He was more of a manly guy. Strike off into the to the to the wild blue yonder. Strike off into the into the desert and just go find the place where I will show you. You know, he's the more adventurous type. And I think that Isaac kind of romanticized that adventurous, fearless, courageousness about his dad. And so when he saw it in his son, uh, you, you, you never read of any wild adventurous exploits of Isaac, right? But his son is kind of the reincarnation, if you will, of Abraham in a sense. And so, um, Isaac is more inclined to be closer to closer to um, Esau. Now, there's a story here that gives us another element that's that's kind of that's really important, and it's in chapter uh, it's in chapter 27 and verse. Uh, we'll start with verse with verse one. When Isaac was old, his eyes were weak, so so that he could no longer see. And he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, my son, here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I'm now old and don't know the day of my death. So it's coming soon, it's, you know, it's getting dark. Now then, get your equipment, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country, hunt some wild game for me, prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Now, Rebecca was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. And when Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebecca said to her son, uh, I, oh, look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, bring me some game 
and prepare some tasty food to eat so that I might give you my blessing before my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now, my son, listen carefully and do what I tell you. So, so basically, um, <laughs> and I'll come back to this, but uh, we're going to stay here a little bit. But when you think about what causes a person to, to develop toxic patterns, it is because of nature, but it's also because of nurture, right? Here it is. His mom tells him straight up. She says, now, my son, <laughs> listen closely. <laughs> listen carefully to what I tell you. You know, she's, she's literally teaching my man how to deceive his father, directly teaching him. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. And take it to your father to me, eat so he may give you his blessing before he dies. Check him out. He says, Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, but my brother Esau is hairy man while I have smooth skin. What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go get them for me. So he went, got them, and brought them to his mother, and she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. I, I'm, I'm going to just keep reading the rest of this. It says, then Rebecca took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and put them on her younger son, uh, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with the goat skins. And then she landed, she handed to her son Jacob the tasty food and the bread uh, she had made. He went to his father and said, my father, uh, yes, my son, he answered, who is it? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I've done as you told me, please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, how did you find it so quickly? The Lord God gave me success, he replied. Do light on God, it's crazy. Then Isaac said to him, come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. So, 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 so Isaac knew something was up, right? He, he knew something wasn't right. And he says, man, um, come here, bro. <laughs> come here. Let me touch you because I'm not sure something ain't right. And, um, I, I, you know, your voice don't really, you know, he goes on to say your, your, your skin feels like, feels like Esau, but your voice sounds like Jacob. He can't really see. So he's saying, I'm listening to your voice and I'm touching your skin. I'm not quite sure. When I think about this, I think about when I think about this particular story, and I, and I, maybe we do have to do a deep dive because it's, it's seven thirty. We we uh, we just getting started. Um, it's obvious. I, I I can't help but think of the the show. Um, was it Power? Right, where you got you know this kind of uh, criminal enterprise family, and and what's what's interesting about the show is that the parents are like actively teaching their kids how to be criminals, right? And the fact is, you know, they say kids don't do what they you say, they do what they see, right? That sometimes we um, perpetuate and we, 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 we nurture, we cultivate rather is the better word, uh, negative cycles in our in our children because we demonstrate we practice them in front of them um, and so you know shout out to those children who witnessed their parents uh, doing um, uh, you know despicable things I I know a man who um, he literally witnessed his father murder his mother. Um, he says, this is his own words, not mine. He says he believes, you know, he's battled cancer. He's battling cancer. Um, 
and and he he believes that he developed cancer because of the unforgiveness, the anger um, that he has held in himself for all these years because of what he saw his his father do to his mother. Um, would you be surprised if that kind of if that person had developed uh, an anger problem or or a vindictive problem? Right. Turns out the guy is kind of vindictive. Um, I'm, I want us to continue um, this next 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 week, but um, I, th there's something that comes to mind here that um, there's this there's a saying right that it ran in my family, uh, it runs in my family right. Doyer said, I think it runs this 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 um, forgetfulness runs in my family, right? But the quote here says that it's up to us to break generational curses. And that when they say it runs in my family, you tell them this is where it runs out. And there, you've seen this in various places that it ran in my family until it ran into me, right? Um, I believe that that God and I and we'll talk about this a little bit more uh, next week because God places Jacob on this on this journey right where he where where he has to learn to or to or, or should we say or unlearn um, some of the some of the stuff in his in his in his past so so he comes out the womb grabbing his brother's foot trying to get a foothold and trying to get trying to get the the upper hand over his brother but then he's taught he's actively taught how to how, how to get over right and so and so maybe maybe we will do a deep dive maybe we'll spend the next few weeks uh, tell me what y'all think we'll spend the next few weeks just looking at this family i had i had a, i had a couple places i want to go but but it's probably going to take us a little while to to wrestle with this and to see kind of the implications, right? Um, so, so we'll, we'll look at some more next week, and particularly, uh, we will look at how not just not just how the patterns begin, but how we can make sure that they end, right? Um, and so, and so next week, next week. Next week we will we will we will look at it look at it some more. Hey, don't forget that you can um, check out past uh, study sessions, um, and if you have questions, just hit me up at CC Think and Write. Uh, use the use the hashtag RTT Study. Please share the study, um, and use the use the hashtag RTT Study, and you can go to the website. There is a um, there is a tab on the website for um, for the uh, Real Talk Tuesday, and you can go to the tab and look at the the past 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 study sessions. All right. Well, look. Let's let's pray, and um, and then next week we will continue. God, thank you so much for for your word, and thank you for this time that we've had to 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 look a little bit closer. We pray that you would continue to give us insight and help us to break the cycles so that it runs in our family, but then it will it will run out when it runs into us. God, uh, keep us for we can't keep ourselves in Jesus name. Amen.